Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Josephine Watson, and I'm the Commercial Project Editor at iGaming Business. We're really happy to be hosting a webinar for Delta DNA this afternoon, uh, in which we'll be discussing the use of personalization and gamification to increase ROI and player engagement. Uh, the gaming industry has known for a while that it has a retention problem, and this has caused concerns about how effectively acquisition budget is being spent. So there's an increasing drive to improve the situation by developing a much clearer understanding of online player behaviors and learning from techniques successfully developed in other sectors. Your host for today will be Mark Robinson, Chief Executive Op Officer at Delta DNA, who will describe what gamification and personalization are, how they can improve the management of players to gain higher LTVs, whilst also proactively addressing problem gambling. There'll be a Q&A section following Mark's presentation, so please do submit questions as we go along, and we'll try to address as many of them as possible in the allocated time. With that, I'll hand over to Mark. Uh, thanks, Josie, um, and welcome everybody from a, a slightly wet and windy Edinburgh this, this afternoon. Um, apologies for the slightly long title um, on, the, on, the, um, on the webinar today. But over the next 40 minutes, what I want to really talk about is the shifting perception. Um, we've been working in the real money gaming industry for several years now, and we're really seeing an acceleration of um, the mindset in the industry, really moving from a, a game perspective to a player perspective. And what I want to do over the, over the next um, 40 minutes on the webinar is just talk a little bit around that shift in perception, what that means in terms of how the businesses are run, how the relationship with players is built, and also some sort of technical, analytic, and marketing implications for that. Um, as a little bit of background, um, uh, as Josie said, my name is Mark Robinson, and I'm CEO of Delta DNA. Um, but I'm actually an analyst, an analyst by trade, um, data analyst uh, working in marketing and, um, and customer research. So I've always had an inbound, inbound, inbuilt uh, curiosity about player experiences and using data to really understand players, their mindset, their wishes, um, their blockers, and, and really use that insight to drive and develop um, highly engaged relationships with players. And if there's one thing that I've learned um, in the seven years since we um, founded Delta DNA, it really is about engagement. It's not about revenues. If you get engagement right, then the revenues will come. And that's one of the themes that I want to touch on through the, through the presentation. Um, but before we move on to the slides, just to just to provide a bit of context, um, let me tell you a little bit about Delta DNA and, and its journey to here. Um, seven years ago, when we founded the business, we saw a huge gap in the mobile games industry. Um, the gaming industry um, and video gaming industry, I mean, was moving from a console platform to a mobile platform. The commercial model was going from a paid model to a free-to-play model. And so we found a Delta DNA because the industry was moving from not knowing anything much about the players to really needing to know how to build engagement and how to manage those players live in the environments um, to make those games successful. And that absolutely vital dynamic meant that the mobile gaming industry accelerated quickly from not knowing anything about players to um, managing the players um, from uh, insights and deep deep understanding of the, of the players' behaviors. And this is the opportunity now that is growing in, in the real money gaming side. Obviously, the sectors are, are very adjacent. Um, the real money gaming side has uh, you know, particular opportunities and also particular challenges in, in adopting this stuff, and, and, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but what we, what we see um, is that there are great learnings that are, that are transferable, not just from mobile gaming, but, but other app sectors into real money gaming. And we've been working over the last two, or two three years with our clients to um, make these best practices live and breathe within the online environments. 
So it's gratifying to see that um, real money gaming is now starting to embrace real-time personalization, gamification, um, actually starting to see some of the mechanics that are commonly used in free-to-play mobile games now appearing in real money gaming. But through our work, um, we were keen to share some of the best practices and also how to, how to overcome some of the challenges in really making this work for your businesses. So that's what we're going to step through um, on the session today. So as Josie was hinting at in, in the um, preamble, we've, in the real money gaming industry, we've always obviously had a real good go at acquisition marketing. Um, players were heavily bonus to um, move from brand to brand or for new people to try out um, online gambling. Um, there were obviously challenges with that business model. N number one, it was difficult to assess which parts of the acquisition marketing budget were profitable and which weren't. Um, it also means that you know, typically when a, a new player comes on board, there are quite complicated rules to unlock the bonuses. So therefore, the initial experience isn't great. Um, and actually, if you look at it um, in terms of the economics, retention focus and retention spend is four times the payback. So it's much better to retain a player than it is to require a new player. And it feels like the focus of marketing departments has been uh, wrongly balanced. And we're now seeing the rebalancing so that the activity is leaning much more towards retention activities um, as, uh, instead of acquisition activities. And this is, you know, a very, um, a very good departure for for the industry. And as the um, as the relationship with players get get stronger, then there are big opportunities for brands to be enhanced through their CRM programs. Because, you know, let's face it, typically the games are the same. Whether you're talking about casino games, poker, slots, sports betting. Um, and right now, most of the contact with players is via bulk email, reactivation email, onboarding email. It's not that well differentiated. Um, it's pretty much single channel, although there are other channels coming into play. And we see a huge opportunity for the, um, the companies that are adopting real-time personalization and gamification in tandem to really um, invest in that player relationship. So what do we mean by best practice CRM? And some of this stuff is common sense, but it's probably worth um, reminding ourselves. We actually can collect a lot of data about our players um, online. We can collect every spin of the slot, we can collect every turn of the card, we can turn it, we can collect every sports bet if we want to. And that data is so valuable um, and so insightful that it is a shame that frankly, quite often, we're not treating players like we know them. And thinking about um, you know, even as individuals, our experiences interacting with apps or interacting with online experiences via websites, how many times do we get the feeling that the brand that we're interacting with is treating us like we know, like, like we're known to them? And this is, this is the opportunity and this is the challenge. Part of this is unlocking a new set of thinking. Um, it's less about um, campaigns and promotions. And it's more about a player first approach. So that, that's something that you'll hear me talking about over the next a lot over the over the next um, uh, session. Um, player first approach, really getting inside the player's mindset and understanding that there are different types of players that need different treatments and using gamification and real time personalization techniques to really manage that. So Typical foundations and fundamental foundations of best practice CRM include thinking about the player journey first, thinking about in session messaging, what can we do in the session because that's the best place to interact with players live in session. 
think about building long-term engagement. Um, and by long-term, I mean years. It's, it's notable that the, in the free-to-play industry, um, these games now do last for years and stay in the charts for years. That's, that's exciting. And uh, change of focus. Uh, and a motivation for marketing to think in different terms. What that tends to deliver then is um, lots of precisely targeted campaigns. Um, pr by precisely targeted, I mean you know small groups of um, small groups of campaigns, precisely targeted. A B testing is a fundamental, and you're working through marketing activity to optimize the online environment. Every time you run a campaign. You close the loop, you try different things, and you start to experiment quickly in the businesses. And this is where um, the real money gaming guys um, have an opportunity to learn from free to play in terms of that live player management, live ops, it's called in free to play gaming, where A B testing and um, precisely targeted campaigns are fundamental to optimizing the whole of the environment. So the different components of this, and this is what we're going to you know, cover in a little bit of detail, are what actually are the gamification mechanics that we can deploy here that will augment the environment, understand how we get to a clear understanding of player experiences using player segmentation techniques, um, using insights and modeling. And then understand how we can deploy those two things to actively manage players across their life cycle in real time, in the session, and complemented by other channels. So, you know, some of this is fundamental. Um, and the starting point uh, that I advise to everybody starting to look at this area is to really start to look at your online experiences with fresh eyes and really un understand it from the player's point of view. And that's quite difficult. It's, it's moving yourself into a, a different mindset, um, a different hierarchy of, of, of learnings. And you know, there are very simple rules at the very basic le level to create um, good online environments and attractive online environments that give the players um, the start to their um, the journey to engagement. Um, these are well known, but without the fundamentals, you can't obviously build upon them. So the fundamentals are you're moving from a, a busy environment to a more structured environment, a more curated environment. Sometimes it's helpful to think about a novice player um, you know, people don't make any assumptions about the players, um, new players' um, level of understanding. If you were a novice player coming into some of these environments, then you would quickly get confused. Um, you may not have a good first session because you're actually not sure what you're meant to do. Um, you know, the, it, the, 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 the websites and the apps sometimes are guilty of making the players do all the hard work rather than guiding them through what would be a good first session. Um, so a journey through um, the, the initial sessions to give players a sense of progression and a sense of achievement and satisfaction is absolutely vital. And some of the gamification mechanics that we are going to talk about in the next few slides really deliver on that. So. I mean, part of this is, is really just understanding the look and feel of the environment at the very basic stage and aiming towards a clean and attractive um, environment with a set of mechanics and uh, gamification mechanics that can be deployed for particular players. So yes, the broad rules are clean environment, give a sense of the experience without trying to give the player the whole experience on the first visit, a clear route through the first session to get to you know, a level of achievement or a level of progression or a satisfactory outcome. And this is the first step on the journey. This is not trying to sell the whole thing or to cover the whole experience in, 
in one fell swoop. Remember that first sessions can be you know, less than 10 minutes uh, sometimes. So you really have got a very short spell to really get, a, get the player to a, a level of comfort with the environment. And really, this is super important. The player first approach and attitude to this stuff is vital. And we often at Delta DNA, regardless of the sector or the business that we're talking to, talk about how new players experience the online environments for the first time. And it really is our job is to work with our clients to manage the players into a good um, level of engagement into in these environments by recognizing that we're really trying to keep players experience between two um, I suppose extreme uh, edge cases one would be where a novice player a completely new player who hasn't gambled before is interested in trying things out they may be delivered into a pretty busy environment it might be a busy lobby um, there may not be much direction there's lots of buttons to press but um, there's no clear route um, and that obviously delivers a level of uncertainty and a level of you know anxiety anxiety is not too harsh a word where a player will leave after the first session and not return and it's mainly because they have a sense of the environment that leaves them feeling uncertain um, and not sure how to engage with the environment. So this means that lots of signposting is required, a good sense from um, the online experience as to what a good outcome is for that session one, getting them to a part of the environment where they can achieve something in terms of maybe playing slots or having a, having a practice bet or you know, having some level of experience that isn't the full experience but gives them a start. And obviously, we're, this is all a balancing act. So we're trying to um, also, uh, as well as keeping novice players happy, respond to expert players who are very familiar with the environment. They know where they need to go to do their stuff. They like the look and feel. They probably don't want to be disrupted. And this is part of the cultural challenge, I think, that you know, RMG companies, as well as other companies, are responding to how to keep our traditional um, gamers involved and happy in the environment whilst tweaking the environment to be more attractive and more sustainable for, for novice players. And that is a balancing act. And we'll talk a little bit about how to achieve that balancing act as we, um, as we go through the slides. So really, you know, the, the name of the game here is to recognize that there are lots of different types of players um, understand the re different reasons for churn, and in extreme cases, it will be between novice players being anxious about the environment and leaving, or um, too many barriers in the way, too many blockers in the way for expert players to get to their um, preferred outcome, and they leave through to boredom or frustration. Um, but you know, the good news is that um, there's technologies and toolkits that can obviously help with these. Um, use cases and others. Before I talk a little bit about the, the solutions and technologies um, and mechanics to start solving this, let's step back a little into the world of Social Casino, which on our sort of journey at Delta DNA over the last seven years, we have been um, learning lots about what makes engagement work on mobile and online. Um, so just thinking about Social Casino for a little while, obviously the player profiles are not the same here as Real Money Gaming, but I think there's some useful lessons to learn. And the worlds aren't so alien from each other as perhaps is, is commonly thought. Um, number one, it's a tough economy. So as I was saying before, it's really important that um, a, great, a great understanding of the player experiences is um, generated so that the players can act be actively managed in the environment. You know, we see acquisition um, CPIs coming in at two dollars plus. If the LTVs in um, social casino are you know two dollars fifty plus, then you've got to really work hard at your engagement to make sure that you get the most of most back from that investment. Some of the free to play industry work with 60, 70% of players not returning after the first session. 
So the first session is a lot of our work and a lot of our focus with our clients to make sure that the outcomes from the first session are as best as they can possibly be and that players will return um, for further sessions in due course. So getting really good at online engagement means that you know the lessons from social social casino are relevant. Social doesn't necessarily mean casual. It doesn't really mean friends, but it works because it's a, quite a cultural mind shift. The sorts of mechanics that are used in social casino now are being deployed in RMG to the benefit of um, of the particular brands, and um, we can see how those different mechanics can build up into a good player relationship. So let's take a minute to skip through some of the main mechanics and give you uh, an indication and a highlight of how the different mechanics can combine into uh, rich um, and enhanced online experience for players. So we've already talked about simple uh, UX, um, personalized UX, we'll talk about in a minute how to achieve that. Um, part of the recipe here is to combine different mechanics into one environment. So absolutely, we need to give players a sense of progression. Achievement systems and tasks um, are a great way of um, building a journey into the environment for players that goes above and beyond the core game. And this is where you know, there is a big lesson here from free to play. Free to play games that are successful generally have a core game, which is generally quite a simple game. And it has a meta game, which is where the journey takes place on games like Homescapes, etc. You've got a simple match three game at the heart of the game, but you've also got um, rewards from achieving outcomes from the match three game that then you can convert into um, decorations for your house. Um, you can gift to friends. There's a lot of interaction and interplay between the core game and the meta game, which is vital for um, leveraging a lot of these gamification mechanics. Leaderboards and clubs are another great um, tool for um, responding to different types of players. Leaderboards obviously for competitive players and there are quite a few of them around. Clubs for more sociable and collaborative players. Um, messaging is, is obviously important in terms of um, interacting with the players um, and, and also letting the players interact with each other. Um, collection mechanics, collection is a very strong psychology that we see a lot in games and, and the same as in, um, in uh, real money gaming for bragging rights. And obviously real money gaming is, leads the way in terms of VIP um, programs. Mainly that's taken from sort of land-based experience, but now we're seeing some very innovative and uh, compelling reward programs for VIP in the industry. So quickly through um, each of those in order, UIX and lobby, a clean environment, um, an attractive environment, not busy, recommendations if you can that are personalized to the player, understanding if a player is dwelling too long in the lobby and making sure that they're prompted to get to you know, a good outcome, which might be trying a game. Um, underst understanding that there is a meta game interaction here um, alongside the core game and making sure that the look and feel really does resonate with the brand imaging. Progression, um, players will be on a journey and their life cycle can be expressed through this progression. Um, loyalty rewards can be, can be gained on on making those achievements or leveling up. Um, and progression goals will in, encourage players to return. They will encourage players to um, get into a natural cadence of playing at different, um, different times and different sessions. And it's self-fulfilling in terms of levelty and, loyal, and loyalty can, um, can be ha rewarded higher and higher as players get deeper and deeper into, into the um, the reward mechanics and, and the journey through the game. Leagues and competitions. Um, there's a few different tricks here to make these work well. It's, it's not very motivating for 
a player to know that they're 250,000th on a, on, a, on a league. It's much better to start players in small pools of similarly skilled players. So matchmaking is quite important and is something that we see done very well um, through technologies like Delta DNA and others um, within free-to-play games. Um, you can then, having a, a league system with players that are similarly skilled or teams that are similarly skilled, look, look at the different movements on a, on a weekly basis. Promotion and relegation concentrates the mind in terms of giving players other reasons to play. And then that can also work in terms of um, different reward mechanics, different ways of um, generating scores or XPs within a, within a reward mechanic. Um, and sometimes this is taken to the extent of rewards um, are generated with a sort of random redemption factor. And, and this is certainly attractive in some instances um, to deploy in your gamification process. Clubs as well, um, for certain sort of players, um, competitions and collaboration can, can build engagement where achievements in top clubs are rewarded. Um, players will regularly check back to make sure that they're not letting the other members of their team down. And it also, if, if you're getting into sort of leagues and into um, tournaments, then appointment setting, which is a very strong dynamic in games um, to encourage engagement, then is um, a vital, vital component of the, the ecosystem. Um, so people then tend to start to work together to, um, to achieve team challenges. All the players contribute to a team XP or loyalty score, and it's really super popular. We've seen this work extremely well in um, free-to-play games, and now starting to see it in real money gaming. Because it's super popular with particular types of players that um, will be highly engaged and um, highly motivated to play. Um, final couple collection mechanics. Um, you know, it's amazing as people will have followed the sort of Fortnite story over the last few months, how um, custom items um, and vanity items can generate quite a lot of money. And some of this is, you know, at, at, the, at the sort of simple psychology of bragging rights and status symbols. Um, but many of the social casino um, clients that we work with have got um, collection mechanics for rare items um, based on um, outcomes that the players achieve in terms of their task and progression system. Um, at the extreme end of this, and maybe this is a little bit of a stretch for real money, but asking friends to um, uh, contribute to particular hands and particular tournaments, um, particular outcomes. Um, this is one way of, of um, getting players to play across different game verticals. Um, obviously, consideration needs to be had in terms of how relevant it is for different parts of the real money gaming ecosystem. But there are certain applications of this where you're encouraging collaboration at its simplest level to um, build engagement and build community across players. And then finally, accessing the player profile information so that as a player, you know how you're doing on your achievements, you know what is the next um, goal in terms of the journey. And having a very clear and um, attractive way of interacting with that and actually probably making that um, uh, known to other members of the team or other, other players. The final one is um, a very strong motivation, and this is, a, this is a game called Golf Clash, which I'm sure many of you have played. And the real nice mechanic here, gamification mechanic, is to allow um, preset messages um, to be sent during the course of the game which is a nice feature because it builds up a, a bit of interaction with players in a, in a very low key way. And that sort of instant access, quick chat can liven up what can be quite a quiet environment. Um, and we've seen really high adoption of this um, for players in these sorts of games. So those 
lots of information in that sort of gamification quick run through. Um, big questions about how that can be deployed within RMG. But we've been working successfully with um, particular RMG operators um, to deploy those. But one thing I would say right now is that you don't have to do all of these at once. Taking a measured um, and small steps approach to building out the environment with um, some of these mechanics um, so that you know, the player management can lean on these mechanics without disrupting you know, the traditional players or the look and feel of the ecosystem in itself is definitely the right way to go. But you can imagine that through the course of the player life cycle, these mechanics become vital at rewarding and encouraging loyalty and giving players, whether they're sociable or whether they're competitive, um, uh, a nice set of goals, mechanics and rewards that are much more um, useful to marketers um, than, for example, email to lean on. So that's a quick tour through gamification. The second bit of this, which we'll quickly cover, is on the real-time personalization side of things. Delta DNA has built a technology which is deep analytics, dashboards, and game diagnostics, real-time engagement diagnostics, and personalization. Data comes in in real time and batch from the games and from the, um, the websites and also the backend systems. And our environment is a is a easy way to diagnose game performance in terms of retention and revenues. Um, we use a combination of predictive modeling, micro segmentation, data mining to really start to target campaigns. And as I said at the start, um, this is a real neat area for product teams, execs, marketing guys, and analytics guys with these different roles within businesses to start to collaborate and to optimize the environment through A-B testing, um, through generating um, lots of um, precisely targeted campaigns, and really to get into a very quick cycle of experimentation so that multi-channel marketing is, is truly delivered, but it's multi-channel um, focusing on in-session, real-time marketing first and foremost, backed up by other channels. So the watchwords here are to be able to experiment quickly, um, take direct feedback from the campaigns and the interventions that are created in the system, um, and optimize as you go so that at every part of the player life cycle, um, the relationships are responsive, and we know that each of the campaigns is having a positive, positive effect on engagement. So this all sounds great, but then we have to ask ourselves, what are the blockers here? Um, and you know, although there has been um, strong adoption in, um, in the RMG, um, it certainly hasn't been fast adoption. And as we work with our clients, we understand some of the reasons for this. I think one is that it seems like quite a big task. And I guess it is, but it's a fundamental task and it's a, something that should be fundamental to how the business works rather than bolted on. Um, the culture is often you know, a challenge and we act often as a bridge between the different teams in the business to give comfort and generate consensus in terms of making sure that the traditional players and the traditional um, experience is only enhanced um, by gamification mechanics, that it's not disruptive to the company as a whole and it's additive in terms of managing multiple player experiences. Data fragmentation continues to be a, a bit of a challenge in the industry with operators holding some data, suppliers holding other data, the in-game stuff. Um, the question on ROI, I think, has been addressed pretty much, and we can, we can finish up on, with some stats on that. But the good news is that it's a boardroom conversation, and it's a really strong brand differentiator. We know out there who are the guys that are really embracing this stuff and it's doing uh, a lot of good to their brand 
because of that interaction with their players. So then um, at Delta DNA, we, we talk a lot about how to get started on this stuff. And really our learning is to start small and build up. Um, you know, operators, as I said, have some data, suppliers have other data, and you can start at either end, um, but making a start is, is obviously the most important thing. Thinking about what use cases can be delivered to benefit players in that real-time and online environment, the in-session stuff. Uh, recognizing when players are coming back um, repeatedly, um, playing very intensely, I mean, that is something where there's applications around problem gambling, which are, are interesting and um, obviously a big focus for the industry right now. Understanding the level of deposits and the level of bets and responding to that. Understanding the level of losses and responding to that. There are lots of use cases that can be done on partial data. So our view is that you don't wait to build up the complete 360 player view. That will come, but start small and build up and build confidence and build ROI and um, start the journey uh, in your businesses because part of this is a is a little bit of a cultural shift as well as a you know uh, as as well as a commitment and, and investment in time and uh, money. And here's some of the things that. You know, we've started to action in, pa in parallel with our clients, you know, real-time use cases, uh, VIP recognition um, and responding to VIP's outcomes, uh, prompting players when they're dwelling too long in parts of the environment and prompting them to get to better outcomes, especially during the first session. Um, abandoning deposit is a very common use case um, and also cross promotion when we recognize from player histories um, how to incentivize players to try different parts of the environment. Um, obviously, you know, I said at the start that we should treat players as if we know them. So in the sports betting context, having messaging in session, which is based on the betting history, is a very engaging tool. But much of this isn't rocket science. Much of this is about explaining the environment, explaining new content, content, giving players reasons to return by leaning on the gamification mechanics and then responding as well to churn signals and um, preventing churn through incentives and through um, good engagement in session. Because as we know, generally email is too late. Those as well as problem gambling are real use cases that are actioned and are, are starting to be actioned today. And you know, the winners in this race will be the guys that differentiate their brands on this basis. It's got a lot about loyalty, but it's also about good governance as well. And you know, really, um, there's lots of content out there. And the last few years has been building up the game content in terms of slot, lots of slot machines, lots of variants of games, lots of um, different sorts of sports bets to be um, undertaken. But let's start helping the players find the right content for them and to use analytics and real time personalization and gamification mechanics to make sure that we show them the content that they're really going to hook into and and build a strong relationship over you know, over a long time so that's it um thank you for listening um pick off the quick wins is our biggest um recommendation use this stuff as a way of um, building consensus and evangelizing across the teams a player first approach um the environment design improvements have to come first um, and that's generally where we start in terms of adding gamification mechanics to the online environments but back that up quickly with analytics and real-time crm and get started 
measure it and start the journey because every time that we've done this, we've seen real business benefits. Um, we have seen uh, high levels of activity and delight at the board. And really, there's no other option as far as we can we can see it in terms of um, a modern um, and innovative way to manage players online. So thank you for listening. Um, I think we've got time now for a few questions. Yeah, thanks so much for that presentation, Mark. Really interesting. Um, we are going to now move on to that Q&A segment of our webinar session. Um, but to our audience, please do continue to send in questions, and we're going to wrap through as many as we can in the possible time. Um, so, Mark, obviously, there's been a lot of talk about gamification in the industry in the last few years, but we're only now seeing some progress. Why do you think that is? Um, I think it was hinting at it at the um, at the start. The it's quite disruptive gamification. Um, I guess there's a sense in businesses that we don't want to upset our current player base. Obviously, you know, real money gaming as an industry and and companies within that sector are, are super successful. They're making money. Why would you disrupt that? And that's the hesitation here. But I think that as we're seeing now a breakout of the innovative companies really embracing gamification, there will be a groundswell and a sweep towards getting to best practice in this regard and also on the analytics and real-time personalization side. I think that that will drive better conversations between the operators and the suppliers. And we've certainly had success at facilitating those conversations over the last couple of years. Great, thank you. And, and it seems like it's a fairly monumental task, though, for, for an iGaming operator. What do you think the starting point is? Um, do some very simple things um, well in terms of the, um, the online environment. I think having a hard look at uh, the home page is a very good first task. Um, understanding what sort of mechanics, um, like the examples that I talked through, would add value in the first instance. Think about the first session a lot and think about a novice player coming in and what a good outcome would look like for those players. And then you will get a pretty short list, but a pretty compelling list of what you should do first. Great. And we know that obviously there's other sectors that are already doing this really well. You know, the big disruptors that come to mind are people like Amazon and Netflix. Um, what do you think are some of the biggest learnings um, that we can take from these other industries that would be transferable to iGaming? Um, I, I, I take your point about Amazon and Netflix. I actually think that um, if, if any of our audience have played um, some of the uh, very compelling mobile games on their smartphones or on their tablets, they'll see a very rich and compelling environment. I, I referred to Golf Clash in the presentation. Um, I'm sure if any of our audience have played that game, they really engage with it and they love it. I have done over, over the last couple of years. So... These are rich environments and the game is balanced to the individual player. Um, and that is where the sophistication of the mobile gaming industry has got to, certainly in the free to play side of it. We're now starting to see those techniques um, bubble up in other sectors. Um, real money gaming, obviously. Lifestyle apps, um, fitness apps, that sort of thing are coming along. Um, and um, sports teams, fan management, that sort of thing as well. So there are sectors, including RMG, that are really starting to put this at the center of their businesses. And um, you know that is where they get a competitive advantage. Great, we've had some uh, questions come through from the audience as well. Um, some good questions here. So I think the first one that would be great to touch on um, that's actually been asked about a couple of times in different ways is how are you storing 
player behavioral data? Do you act as a DMT and how do you activate that data digitally? How does that sort of come together? Um, well, in our specific instance, um, we collect data directly from the website or the games or the app. And we combine that into our um, uh, our infrastructure facility. Um, and really, when you talk about behavior, we derive behavior from a lot of the very basic game data. So you can understand um, that we can get a sense of how competitive a player is, how competent a player is, how sociable a player is from that data. Um, and you know, that then starts um, the marketing juices flowing and actually understanding the different segments of players that are in the environment and how we should build a, a conversation with them. So, you know, we know things like how intensely players will play, how many sessions, how long the sessions are. We know what their favorite games are. We know if they play a mix of games, we know their sort of um, level of risk slash reward. So it's rich data in the environment, but the beauty is that you know, in these online environments, we don't need to collect personal data. Apart from if we're um, uh, undertaking email, actually in the environment, all we know about the player is an ID that's generated by the Delta DNA system. So you can imagine that you can get quite intimate with the player in that environment by understanding a lot of their motivations and you can message into those players but you're building um, engagement, but also potentially um, thinking about signals for problem gambling. So um, it's, it's powerful in making the player feel like they are on the end of an intelligent relationship with the, um, with the brand, with the organization. Of course, and I think that, that's obviously one of the, the biggest uh, benefits that people can see. Um, it's not just about the great things that you can be doing for, you know, personalizing experience for those who should be playing and want to be playing, but also those, you know, who need protecting. Um, I think on a slightly different route, um, what should operators be prioritizing here? Is this all about website development or is it about analytics or marketing? What's the sort of priority? Um. It's kind of all of that. So the, 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 the three different elements that you described are all interlinked. Website development, app development to support gamification is a necessary part of it. Getting your data in good shape so that you can analyze and understand player experiences and generate that insight so that the marketing guys can then act on that insight through real-time personalization. I mean, the, the big thing here is that teams that have maybe historically gone about their business um, separately now collaborate very strongly to build these um, player relationships in a sophisticated way. And that's the most gratifying thing about this that we see at our client businesses, that um, <clears throat> you know, our toolkit is uh, is a really neat way of getting the businesses to collaborate together, the business departments to collaborate together. Great. And, and then uh, another question has come through um, regarding the US sports betting market. Um, are you sort of uh, directly approaching the US sports betting market? What are your, what's your sort of strategy with that? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is a, Obviously, as the as the U.S. market opens out, um, this is a big opportunity for us, and we're highly engaged with with several players in the U.S. Um, U.S. market. Um, and you know, it's the same journey that we've described in the presentation. It's getting gamification, mechanics, analytics, and real time personalization working together to deliver these great experiences. And um, you know, as people invest in the US side as it opens out, then that being central to the, their business is, is an important um, component of any investment plan. 
And then with, with sports betting as a, you know, sort of opening that conversation out a bit more, um, someone uh, in the audience has asked why you think sports betters, uh, sports book operators, sorry, are lagging so far behind casinos when it comes to making use of gamification? Well, I'm not so sure why. I think that, you know, in, in, in our experience, um, getting uh the the focus in sports betting historically has been um you know either fraud detection or you know people that people that are exploiting the the system um you know, obviously that is an area where data and analytics has got a very strong part to play um it's a it's a slightly different setup and infrastructure to run the marketing uh, insight stuff to generate real-time personalization so um, you know I, we see that now coming along because um the, the sports books guys have now started to act on their sort of fraud and um, exploitation um priorities um so i think that's all it is it's really just a matter of bandwidth within businesses and um the uh, you know the the level of priorities Um, brilliant. And so we're, we're still coming towards the end of our time, but I think one of the things that would be really interesting to hear a bit more from you about um, is about uh, some examples and, and use cases um, and return of investments that have been delivered from your work. Uh, if you could touch on that at all. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously it's slightly frustrating to us that we have to be, we have to, you know, um, we have to respect client confidentialities and some of the great work that we we're doing in this space. But um, you know what I will say in that regard is that um, you know day in day out we're working on real time campaigns and these use cases and measuring the uplift that we're seeing um, through the combination of uh, gamification and the personalization examples that we've been talking about and you know. Uh, a reasonable uh, common thread through this is that having focused on <clears throat> player engagement uh, and work with our client uh, uh, client um, organizations, we're seeing um, typically a 20% uplift on day 30 retention rates. So after a month from uh, the player starting, a 20% uh, increase in um in player retention what that means is that over the lifetime of the player we get to a 40 dollar increment on what is typically uh between 250 and 300 dollar total ltv so you can start to see that you know that's a significant contribution to um, player value um, a very significant contribution to player value and a very strong ROI based on the investment made in, in um, these capabilities. Um, and this is by focusing on engagement. That, that's the real thing that I'd like to leave everybody with, that you get a player engagement right and the revenues will come through that um, inbuilt um, player loyalty that um, you create through all of these good efforts. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for that. I think that's about all we have time for today. Um, but thanks to our audience for submitting great questions. There are some we didn't get time for today, but I'm sure we will get around to um, answering at some point, hopefully. Um, but thank you also to Mark for joining us and sharing your insights. Uh, to the audience, uh, the webinar has been recorded today and will be available to listen to on demand shortly. And you can rewatch and share with your colleagues. Um, we'll also be sharing the slides on iGaming Business within the next few days. Um, so you'll be able to download those in the resources section and share those as well. Otherwise, thanks everyone for joining us, and we'll see you soon.